We have had our fair share of Lee and Lee uni fans on this channel, most of which ranging from all right to something is wrong with this one. Oh, oh, okay, it's spinning too fast. But generally, we always praise them for having good performance, a working software, which is kind of unusual, one of the best mounting mechanics we have ever seen, and a frame that could be used as a... Uh, to, to hammer nails. Even if all of that is true, for almost every Lee and Lee fan so far, I would have never used them personally. Way too much RGB for me. I like my fans, like my souls. Dark black, maybe a bit of grey, and mostly void. Meet Lee and Lee's UniFan P28, Lee and Lee's high performance addition to the UniFan series. Now in black plastic, darker black plastic, black rubber, and the iconic grey liquid crystal polymer color. The only thing which is not black on here is the part where you can see the metal bearing shell through the see through Lee and Lee logo cutout, which is also black. This is exactly my type of fan. Similarly to what Be Quiet, Cooler Master, and Fantex have introduced in the last year, this thing is fast, very fast. Out of the box, this thing can spin at up to 2600 rpm while it's pushing 92 CFM at 4.79 millimeters of H2O. But before we take a closer look at the fan itself, Let's take a look at the benchmark. First up is our case fan almost heatsink benchmark. For this we install two of these in the front and one in the back of a Fantex P500. Then we let the CPU run wild with a Bequate pure rock on top without the fan in order to create inflated numbers. Allowing the P28 to run at its max 2600 rpm allowed the CPU to be cooled down to 39.1 degrees C above ambient. Positioning the P28 in the upper segment right in between the Silent Wing Pro 4 and Noctua's NF-A12X25, a very, very good result. Then we slowly reduced the fan speed and wrote down the noise at each step, creating a noise to performance graph. On here we can see how well the P28 performs compared to some other contestants across the whole range. From start to about 70% of its speed, the P28 performs quite similarly to a Be Quiet Silent Ring 4 Pro. From there to about 40%, the P28 can keep up with a slightly better ratio, but then it falls behind but mostly due to the Silent Wing's limited minimum RPM while the P28 just jumps down straight to 200 RPM. Compared to a Fantex T30, the P28 managed to keep up a better ratio from start to finish, but if you throw in the Noctia NF-A12X25, it's still not as quiet. The most important comparison for this year, however, would be the Arctic P12 Max, and this is a very mixed thing. In the beginning, the P12 was slightly ahead, or a bit more at some point, but once we go beneath about 70%, the P28 takes over and manages to keep a better noise-to-performance ratio. But this was only for the low static pressure requiring use cases. And luckily for this video, when the fans arrived, we were just in the process of creating the first numbers for radiator fans using our newest companion, the Octopus. Of course we slapped it on there, but please keep in mind that we had limited time and it was only the fifth fan that we ran through it, so the amount of comparisons is quite limited for now. The Octopus is a 9900K clocked down to 4.6GHz at 1.3V core pushing 145W. For this time we had to limit it to only be used on the 120mm Alpha Cool Monster 80mm thick radiator. From there we measured the water temperature coming out of the radiator and subtract the ambient air temperature to get the above ambient temperature of the water. Or in other words, how much can the fan cool down the water? Letting the P28 run wild at 2600 rpm allowed it to keep the water at exactly 11 degrees C above ambient, right in between the Fantex T30 and Noctia NF-A12X25. Similarly to the case benchmarks, we reduced the fan speed in 10% decrements and note down the noise created at each step. For this case, however, we 
we measure the noise separately and at exactly one meter distance, which is also the proper way of doing it. And from now on, we will do everything like that. But we also do it uh, with a radiator attached behind the fan. And this is very important because having something behind or in front of a fan can have a huge influence on how much or what kind of sound it produces. Thus, the radiator noise numbers are measured with the radiator attached to it. And this is the graph that our five contestants created. But let me quickly walk you through this. The top line indicates the water temperature above ambient. It starts at 9 and adds at 35. So the place where you want to be is as much to the right as possible. And in case you wonder why we end all of them at 35, it's because most pumps are dying when the water gets hotter than 60. So 35 plus ambient is about 60, so we end every benchmark once the fan reaches that. On the y-axis, we have the noise. We start at 36 and end at 55, which is what the T38 can push at 3000 RPM. The room ambient noise should be about 37 point something dB, which is also where most of the fans end up once they spin slow enough. For the noise, you want to be as close to the top point as possible. So both lines combined, you want to be as close to the upper right corner as possible. The lower you go, the louder it gets, and the more left you go, the hotter the water becomes. And from that unreachable perfect spot in the top right corner, meaning really really cold and really really quiet, from that spot you can measure the noise to performance ratio of every fan. This then helps us to see which fan is the best at what point. And what we can see here is that the overall best ratio from start to about 60% of its max speed would be the Fantex T30 with the P28 from Leon Lee close behind. From there, for another 20% of their speed, the P28 takes over until the NF812X25 takes the lead in the very low RPM numbers. And from about 40% of their max speed going down, everything just becomes a giant blob with the differences being marginal at best. So overall, as a radiator fan, the P28 has a very good position, being exactly in between the slower spinning A12X25 and the thicker T30 and quicker. Okay, with the benchmarks done, let's have a closer look at the fan itself. These new 120mm Uni P28 are coming in either all black or all white. Measured in their thickness, they are indeed about 28mm thick, though this is mostly due to the rubber measure any other part and you are slightly below 28. In the center of the fan, Li and Li left a cutout to see the metal bearing while still covering it with a piece of see-through plastic, which is then partially painted again with a negative of Li and Li's logo, which unfortunately isn't always 100% precise, leading to some oval-shaped rotation. The only other outstanding design aspect would be the brushed aluminum-styled corners with those reflective aluminum, maybe, borders, which yeah, it, it could have been black if you would ask me. But the main focus of this thing is still the fan blade. Made out of LCP or liquid crystal polymer, these nine heavily bent wings can withstand a lot of force than the traditionally used plastic, meaning that the thing can spin a lot faster and not worry about the fan blades straightening up so that they touch the border. So you can make the gaps a lot thinner. Similarly to other recently released fans, you can regulate the max speed. However, instead of slapping a little button or a switch somewhere on the fan frame, which may or may not lead to you cutting off your finger if you miss it, Lee and Lee tried a totally different approach. They completely separated the max fan speed controller into a pass-through controller that connects in between your fan and your motherboard's 4-pin PVM connector. Now, I'm not sure how many people out there actually use these types of, of limiters, but this approach comes with something very positive and something very negative. First off, you can actually click the button whilst the PC is running and not put yourself or your fan into a dangerous situation. Plus it's kind of convenient that you can position it somewhere reachable thanks to the magnet in the back. But the drawback of this is that you have only one, so you kind of control all of your P28s at once. So you can't have, you know, one or two fans run at max speed and then a third one run at half speed, or you need to buy a second pack to get a second controller. It's this can be an issue. But I still want to emphasize, you do not need to use this. Set a proper fan curve and you can use 
the whole spectrum of the fan in a, in a normal way without limiting it down and taking away some potential headroom which you may need right now. Of course, limiting it down gives you more precise numbers, if you want to call it that, but let's be honest, plus minus 1% is still good. And on that note, the controller allows you to limit the speed to 22 or 1300 RPM, respectively. One thing that made me very happy about these is that Li and Li kept their mounting system. Just like any other Li and Li fan, you can daisy chain them together, creating a giant block. And in case you got the triple pack, Li and Li includes one of these separator cables, which will allow you to daisy chain two individual blocks to each other and then connect the whole chain with a single cable to your motherboard. Which is also designed in a very similar way like the newest Unifan V2s. Press the connector in and you're good to go. And in case you want to install the whole thing on the radiator, you can still twist and remove the leftover connectors. Oh hooks or whatever you want to call these. So where do we stand? Performance wise, those are very very interesting. They are in the middle of everything. For case fans, they seem to be better than T30s, but not quite A12X25s. For radiators, they are better than A12X25s, but not quite T30s. It's if there is another discussion between T30 and A12X25s, those are exactly in between. It, it makes everything easy. It's it's not the best in one category, but the second, in every case. But still, all three are extremely good fans and we are only measuring like the margin of error at, at this point, but considering their noise to performance ratio on both categories, they are exactly in between or in the middle of the two top dogs. Design-wise, they are just my thing. Black, grey, no RGB, exactly what I am looking for. Plus, no controller. Sure, Li and Li software is not bad if you measure it to the scale of crappy software that we have available, but with these here, there is just none. Just connect them to your motherboard and you are done. It's it's perfect. Build quality, it's still a uni fan, it's a brick. Good good luck breaking it. And I love that Lee and Lee indented the screw holes so that you can keep using the regular length radiator screws and you do not need to look around for the perfect ones for hours like we always need to do for the Fantex D30. This is much easier and it hides the screw. As far as I can tell, those are amazing fans. They have amazing performance, amazing radiator performance, and just because of their color, I can absolutely recommend them from, from my side. If you are looking for a uni fan with additional performance and overhead and without the whole RGB cluster, this is the thing for you. But okay, this should be it for Lian Lee and their brand new Uni P28. At this point, a huge thank you to Lian Lee for sending them over. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to not clean my eyes professionally this time. No RGB, no cleaning. It's ah, nice for a change. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the V2 refresh of Lee and Lee's AL fans. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.